Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to you some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Uh-oh, trouble ahead. You know what happens if you step on one of those cracks. I mean, I've heard all my life, if you step on a crack, you'll break your mother's back. Well, I'm not sure I believe that, though. I mean, we've got two events here. We've got the event of either stepping on this crack or not stepping on this crack, and we've got the event of your mother either breaking her back or not breaking her back. And I don't think your mother's health is dependent upon whether you step on a crack or not. I don't think those two events really have much relationship to each other. I think they're independent events. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today, dependent and independent events. And you're going to need to learn to distinguish between dependent and independent events and understand how the probability varies when events are dependent. Let's look at some examples. And first we'll look at an independent event. Let's say your father's got a whole bunch of popsicle flavors. He's got five different flavors and you really want a green one. And he's going to pick one of these flavors at random and give it to me first and then he's going to pick another one at random and give it to you. Well, Let's say he picks a green popsicle for me. Now he's going to pick a popsicle for you. But before he picks that popsicle, he goes back to the freezer, gets another green popsicle, and brings that out. And now he's got, again, five flavors of popsicle, and he's going to pick one for you. Well, your chances of getting green are one in five. There's one way to win a green popsicle, and there are five potential outcomes. The two events were independent. Your probability of getting a green popsicle wasn't affected by the fact that I got a green popsicle because we replaced the green popsicle after my popsicle was chosen. Now let's look at dependent events. Let's say, again, your father picks a popsicle for me first, and then he's going to pick a popsicle for you. But after he picks a popsicle for me, he's not going to replace the color that he gave me so there'll be one fewer potential outcomes. For instance, if he picks a popsicle for me and it's red and you still want a green popsicle, then you've got a one chance in four of getting the green popsicle because I took out one of the potential outcomes, the red, and it left just four potential outcomes. So your probability would, in that case, be 25% of getting a green popsicle. But what if I got lucky and on the first draw I got a green popsicle? Then there'd be no green popsicles left and just the other four flavors. So you'd have zero positive outcomes, zero ways to win out of four potential outcomes, and your probability of getting a green popsicle would be zero percent. Well, let's make this a little more complicated. Let's say I've got a bag and I've got two marbles. One's red and one's purple. And I'm going to put those marbles in the bag and you're going to pick one out at random. And you win a brand new bicycle if you pick the red marble, but you win nothing if you pick the blue marble or the purple marble. So, what are your chances, what's your probability of getting a red marble? Well, that's pretty easy. There's one way to win, that's drawing a red marble, and there's two potential outcomes. So your probability is 1 divided by 2, or 50%. Now, in case you haven't seen this notation before, that P stands for probability, and that sub R stands for the probability of drawing a red marble. If I wanted the probability of drawing a purple marble, it would be P sub P. 
Well, now let's play with this experiment. Let's say you're going to pull one of these marbles and we're going to record what color it was. And then you're going to put that marble back in the bag. I'll shake up the bag and then you pull out another marble. And the only way you win is if you pull a red marble out on the first draw and also on the second draw. So it's the probability of a red plus a red. Well, what would the probability of that be? Well, let's think about the combinations. Let's say the first marble you pulled out of the bag was a red marble, and then you put that back in. Now, the second marble could either be red or the second marble could be purple. So in one case, you would have drawn a red and a red, and in the other case, you would have drawn a red and a purple marble. Well, now, the first marble could also have been a purple one. And then the combinations you could have gotten if you drew first a purple mar marble would be a purple and a red, and a purple and a purple. Now, again, you only win if you draw two red marbles and there's four potential outcomes. So, your probability of winning is one in four. There's another way you can figure that probability though, and it's a whole lot easier than figuring out all the combinations and then dividing the winning combination by all the potential outcomes. It's really pretty easy. The probability of drawing a red marble and then another red marble is the probability of drawing a red marble the first time times the probability of drawing a red marble the second time. You had a one in two chance the first time. We replaced the red marble so there were two marbles in the bag, a red and a purple. So the second time you also had a one in two chance of, win of pulling a red marble. Your probability is one half times one half or one quarter or 25 percent. Well, let's make this a little bit more complicated. Let's say I've got four marbles, two of them are red and two of them are purple. And I put them in a bag and once again you reach into the bag and pull out one marble and if it's red you win. And then you put that marble back in the bag and we shake the bag up and you reach in again and draw a second marble. And for you to win the whole game, both the first marble and the second marble needed to be red. Well, what's your probability of winning? Well, the probability that the first one is going to be red is two out of four or one half or 50%. And since we put that marble back in the bag after the first draw, so that on the second draw there's again four marbles in the bag, half of them red, half of them purple, then your probability of drawing a red on the first draw and again a red on the second draw is the probability of drawing a red on the first draw times the probability of drawing a red on the second draw or one half times one half, which is one quarter, or 25 percent. Well now let's change the game a little bit. I've got those four marbles in the bag and you're going to reach in and pick one marble. But this time after you pick that marble, we're not going to replace it. We're going to keep it out of the bag. Let's say on that first draw you pick a red marble, but we don't put it back in the bag. That means left in the bag is a red marble, a purple marble, and another purple marble. What's your probability of drawing a red marble on the second draw? Well, there's one way to win and three potential outcomes. So your probability is one over three, or 33 percent. And the probability of drawing a red and then another red when the events are dependent would be one half the probability of drawing a red uh, out of the bag initially times the probability of drawing a red out of the bag on your second draw 
or 1 over 6 or 16.7%. So, two events are independent if what happens on the first event does not affect the probability of the second event. And two events are dependent if, if what happens on the first event does influence the probability of the second event. And if we want to calculate the probability of two independent events, it's just the probability of each of those uh, events separately times each other. The probability of A happening plus B happening is the probability of A happening on its own times the probability of B happening on its own. But if there are dependent events, that probability has to be calculated differently. The probability of A plus B equals the probability of A times the probability of B after A has happened, or in other words, adjusted for the outcome of event A. Now there's one more thing I want you to understand, and that's if we have multiple events, more than two events, the same probability formulas work. If I had three events, the probability of A plus B plus C would be the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C. Okay, you're going to roll a pair of dice, and what's the probability that both of the dice will land on a 6? Are these dependent or independent events? Well, the first question you need to ask is, are they dependent or independent events? Will what I roll on this first die in any way impact where the second die is going to land? No, no, they're not. They're, in, they're not related events. So these are independent events. The first event doesn't influence the second event. Now, my calculation of the probability would be the probability of rolling a 6 on the first die times the probability of rolling a 6 on the second die. The probability, since there's six sides, of rolling a 6 is 1 in 6. So, my probability is 1 in 6 times 1 in 6, or 1 in 36, or 2.7 repeating percent. Okay, there's four puppies, and half of them are male. There's two male and two female puppies. And you're going to randomly pick two puppies. What's the probability that they'll both be, both be female? And are these dependent or independent events? Well, that's the first question you've got to ask yourself. Are they independent or dependent? Well, the first time you pick a puppy, there's two males, two females, or there's two females out of four, so your chances of getting a female are 50%. But we're not going to replace that puppy because you're going to keep them and take them home. So when you pick the second puppy, there's one female and two males, and your odds have been changed. So these are dependent events. And the probability of drawing a female plus a female is 2 in 4 times 1 out of 3, or 2 over 12, or 16.6 .6 repeating percent. You got five different letter cubes, and they spell out B I R T H, or birth. And you're going to reach into a bag and pick one of these out at a time, 
and we're going to try to figure out what are the odds that first you pick a B, and then you pick an I, and on the third draw you pick a T. Well, would these be independent or dependent events? Well, it says that we're not going to replace the letters. So after we draw our first letter, and let's say it was B, that's only going to leave one, two, three, four letters. So the odds of drawing an I on the second draw have been affected by the fact that we drew a B in the first draw and didn't replace it. Consequently, these are dependent events. And we calculate the probability of drawing the letter B and then the letter I and then the letter T by calculating the probability that B would happen, which is 1 in 5. There's one way to win out of five different cubes. And then we multiply that times the probability of drawing an I. Well, you remember we drew the B and we didn't put it back, so now we've got four cubes and one of them's an I, so our probability of drawing the I is 1 in 4. And then we've got the probability of drawing the T. And remember, we took out the B and the I and didn't replace them, so there's three cubes, and one of them is a T, so the probability of drawing a T would be 1 in 3. And our probability of drawing a B and then an I and then a T would be 1 fifth times 1 quarter times 1 third or 1 over 60 or 1.6 repeating percent. Now I've been using this repeating terminology over the last couple of slides and I think most of you know that when I put a line over a number in a decimal place that means that this number is really 1.6666 and the sixes go on forever. Well, that's our lesson on dependent and independent events. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and download and print the worksheet on dependent and independent events. After you tried the worksheet, go back to MasterMath and try the quiz on independent and dependent events. I hope you understand the difference now, and I hope you had a pretty good time, and I hope I see you again real soon.